take a look at your nails because did you know that they can show signs of a problem with your thyroid gland? That's right, and in this video, we're gonna be going over the nail findings of thyroid disease. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you like getting your skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, be sure and subscribe, turn the bell notifications on, that way you know as soon as my videos go live. Give me a follow over on Instagram and TikTok because I'm very consistent with skincare content on those platforms as well. Nail findings can be a really helpful early clue to an underlying problem with the thyroid gland. What the heck is thyroid? thyroid hormone anyway. You have probably heard people talk about thyroid. Maybe you even know somebody who has a problem with their thyroid, whether it be hyperthyroidism or hypothyroid. They probably have to take medication. Maybe they have to see their doctor pretty regularly for checkups to make sure the thyroid hormone is on track. But what exactly is thyroid hormone? It is a hormone that helps control our metabolism. It's also really important for a variety of other bodily functions, and it's critical for brain development in babies. Thyroid hormone is made in the thyroid gland, a small gland that sits in the front of your neck. Thyroid hormone, which is an umbrella term for thyroxin or T4, and triiodothyronine, T3. T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone, T4 is inactive, but T4 can be converted to T3, the active form of thyroid. Your thyroid gland also makes calcitonin, another hormone that's really important for controlling the levels of calcium in your blood. Thyroid disease is actually really common. You can have too much thyroid hormone or you can have too little thyroid hormone. Too much thyroid hormone is called hyperthyroidism. The most common reason for that is something called Graves' disease. Too little thyroid or hypothyroidism can be due to iodine deficiency or more commonly an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hyperthyroidism typically presents with an increase in the heart rate, you're very sweaty, feel jittery, and maybe losing weight, and the skin feels warm and damp. Hypothyroidism, on the other hand, or low thyroid hormone, kind of presents the opposite. Decrease in heart rate, you feel sluggish, lethargic, maybe experience weight gain, the skin actually feels cold and it's dry and you feel cold because your metabolism is slowed down. But before these signs appear, you actually can have nail findings first as an early clue. One of the most common nail findings associated with thyroid disease is something called koilonychia or spoon nails. Spoon nails, koilonychia, koilos is Greek for spoon. And the reason they're called that is because they actually look like a spoon. This is a type of nail dystrophy in which the nail plate is depressed centrally and elevated laterally. So it literally looks like a little spoon. And one way to assess for this is to look at the nail and take a little drop of water and place it on the nail plate. If you have spoon nails, that droplet of water will actually stay on the nail plate, whereas if you don't, it'll fall off to the sides. It's just like a little cup. Now, koilonychia, or spoon nails, is certainly not specific for a problem with your thyroid. It can be seen in a variety of other issues, like iron deficiency anemia, psoriasis, alopecia areata, diabetes. It can be present as a result of trauma to the nails, whether that be from aggressive manicuring, or maybe something related to your occupation. It's a normal finding, actually, in young babies. So if you have this, don't automatically assume you have a problem with your thyroid, but definitely bring it to the attention of your medical provider for evaluation, it certainly could be an early sign of low thyroid or high thyroid, because it can be seen in both. But more commonly, it is seen in hyperthyroidism, meaning elevated thyroid hormone. Another really common nail finding associated with thyroid disease is basically very brittle nails. 22% of cases of brittle nails associated with thyroid disease were seen in people with autoimmune thyroid problems, whereas 19.6% were seen in those with non autoimmune thyroid disease. Of these cases, roughly 14% were seen with hypothyroid or low thyroid. That makes sense. Remember, with low thyroid, things are kind of dry, slow, probably have poor blood flow to the nails as a result of trying to keep the body warm, vasoconstriction peripherally. It's gonna have decreased blood flow to the fingertips. That's why in hypothyroidism, your hands and feet often feel cold. 
Along with the brittle nails, the nail plate can be much thinner. It can have little white spots, that's known as leukonychia. And the nail plate can actually lift off. That's called onycholysis. Speaking of onycholysis, this is another really common finding across the board in people who have thyroid disease. Onycholysis refers to a separation of the nail plate from the underlying structures. And as it lifts up, air gets underneath the nail plate, looks like a big white smear, a big white spot. Most often it's going to start out at the tip of the nail, but it can expand to move down to close to, close to the uh, half moons. It looks white, but it's basically air as that nail plate is lifting off. Onycholysis, like coilinichia, certainly is not at all specific for thyroid disease. It can be seen in a lot of other things. Uh, traumatic manicuring practices, it can be seen in pregnancy, again with psoriasis. People who have hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating can also deal with onycholysis. Now I mentioned, however, that people who have hyperthyroidism, they often deal with excessive sweating. So perhaps the onycholysis that they deal with as a nail finding may actually reflect to a certain extent the excessive sweating that they may be experiencing due to elevations in thyroid hormone. But again, it's not specific. However, if you are dealing with this, definitely bring it to the attention of your healthcare provider. They can assess you and your symptoms and determine if it's necessary to check blood work to see if you have a problem with the thyroid. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you have hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, low thyroid and high thyroid. What nail findings are more common with each of these types? With hypothyroidism or low thyroid, again, that's where things are kind of sluggish, you may experience weight gain, uh, dry, cold skin. The most common nail finding in hypothyroidism is actually fragile nails. And that makes sense, again, because the blood vessels are probably clamping down in an effort to preserve core body temperature. You're not getting good circulation to the nails, so it's not great for growing healthy, strong nails. So uh, fragility of the nail plate is probably the most common finding in hypothyroidism, reported in 70% of cases. Along with that is slow growth. Now, normal Normally the nails grow roughly three and a half millimeters a month, which is the equivalent of about a tenth of a millimeter a day. But in hypothyroidism, it's much, much slower. So if you notice that your nails are really brittle, growing very slowly, that may be a clue that your thyroid hormone is low. And along with that, the nail plate itself is thin. That is another very common finding in hypothyroidism. So you've got fragile, slow growing, thin nails. And then the fourth most common finding in hypothyroidism for the nails is gonna be that onycholysis. The nail plate actually physically lifting up off of the underlying structures, air getting underneath, and you get that big white spot. Less commonly in hypothyroidism, you can have something called leukonychia, which means white spots on the nails. The white spots can either be little white dots or lines. It's gonna vary a bit. Leukonychia is certainly not specific for thyroid problems. You can have leukonychia as a result of traumatic nail practices, like uh, pulling off your nail polish, that actually can cause a leukonychia. Pushing your cuticles back aggressively can cause leukonychia. Less commonly in hypothyroidism, you also can have striped nails or nail pitting. Nail pitting is exactly what it sounds like, little tiny pits on the nail plate. This, again, not specific to thyroid disease. You can see it in alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune disease where you have patches of hair loss, but you also can have nail pitting in alopecia areata. You can have it in eczema, and you can have it in psoriasis. So it, again, it's not specific, but if you're noticing these nail changes, again, bring it to the attention of your healthcare provider. What are the most common nail findings of hyperthyroidism? Again, that's where your thyroid hormone is high, uh, maybe from Graves disease. And the most common nail finding with hyperthyroidism is actually coilinichia, the spoon nails. Now spoon nails, again, not specific for hyperthyroidism, and it actually can also occur in hypothyroidism, but more commonly, it's gonna be seen in hyperthyroidism. Again, that's where you put a little droplet of water on the nail plate and it stays just in place, it doesn't fall off, and it's because you've got a depression in the middle of the nail plate and the edges are elevated laterally. The second most common finding in hyperthyroidism is 
actually softening of the nail plate, kind of crumbly nails. In hyperthyroidism, nail growth is usually normal or increased. Onycholysis is actually the third most common nail finding in hyperthyroidism. While onycholysis is more common in hypothyroidism, it certainly can happen in hyperthyroidism, possibly because you do have maybe in some cases an increased rate of nail growth and the nails are a lot softer so they're more vulnerable to lifting up off the underlying supportive structures and the nails can be very brittle now an uncommon finding in hyperthyroidism it actually occurs in about one percent of patients with graves disease is something called clubbing in which the fingers actually look like they are clubbed out. The reason this happens is that patients who have Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease, they make antibody, anti-thyroid antibodies. And those antibodies actually can bind to um, keratinocytes, endothelial cells, fat cells, cause them to make more hyaluronic acid and other glycosaminoglycans. And that leads to swelling of the tissues around the nail and what appears as clubbing. This is not very common and certainly wouldn't be an early finding of hyperthyroidism, but it does happen in about 1% of patients who have Graves' disease. Patients with hyperthyroidism also can have thinning of the nails and very uncommonly, they can also have leukonychia. What is the mechanism behind some of these nail findings? In the case of spoon nails with hyperthyroidism especially, it's thought perhaps there's some kind of protein or amino acid imbalance. In hyperthyroidism, you have an increase in metabolism. So it's possible that you're not getting getting good enough levels of uh, amino acids and proteins to support proper nail growth. And that's why in that situation, you're more prone to spoon nails, a nail dystrophy. Patients who have hyperthyroidism, because of their increase in metabolism, they'll in some cases have a decrease in the protein albumin. And that may also be a marker here, an indicator of a problem with making healthy nail growth. In hypothyroidism, however, you have uh, basically a decrease in body temperature, secondary to the decrease in basal metabolic rate that happens from having inadequate thyroid levels. And with this, your body's response is to preserve core body temperature. And it does that by decreasing blood flow to the extremities. That is why patients who have low thyroid, they often complain of cold, clammy extremities. Their hands and feet are always feeling cold. It's because your body is trying to maintain core body temperature, so it clamps down on the blood vessels that go out to the extremities in an effort to redirect blood centrally to keep you warm. As it does that, as you can imagine, with decreased blood flow to the extremities, you're not gonna have optimal delivery of nutrients and oxygen necessary to support healthy nail growth. That's likely why patients with uh, hypothyroidism have brittle nails and slow nail growth. On the flip side with hyperthyroidism, because the metabolic rate is increased, you feel very warm and flushed, you have peripheral vasodilation. The blood vessels open up peripherally in an effort to release some of that heat. So in that case, you actually perhaps get better blood flow. And that is why in some cases, patients with hyperthyroidism have faster nail growth. And in the case of Graves' disease, again, that's an autoimmune disease where the body makes antibodies, anti-thyroid antibodies. And those antibodies can lead to increased production from fibroblasts and of hyaluronic acid and glycosaminoglycans. This may impact the nail plate and its attachment to the underlying supportive structures. And it also, in some cases, can lead to clubbing or increase in what looks like tissue swelling around the, around the fingernails of the distal, of the, of the fingertips. Thyroid disease is a serious condition, whether it be hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. Those are the nail findings associated with hyper and hypothyroidism. I wanted to share this video with you all because untreated thyroid disease is deadly. Starts out with things like feeling lethargic or feeling jittery, depending on what the nature of the underlying thyroid problem is. But I wanna emphasize that the nail findings I'm sharing with you in this video, they're not specific for a problem with the thyroid. So if you have these, don't automatically jump to the conclusion that you have a problem with your thyroid. There are many other possible reasons to have these nail findings, but they are a clue early on that you may have a thyroid problem and therefore it's helpful to check the thyroid levels or for your doctor to check them. So that is why I'm making this video, not to alarm you. 
if you happen to have some white spots on the nail. Don't overthink it, but again, pay attention to your nails because they certainly can be a window to what's going on internally. Show these to your doctor, and in some cases it may be necessary to check the thyroid hormone. Untreated thyroid disease can be deadly. There are also a variety of skin and hair findings associated with thyroid disease, whether it be hyperthyroid and high or hypothyroid. I recently did a video on the skin signs of low thyroid, so definitely check that one out if you missed it. I go over hair findings and different skin findings, and a few of these nail findings appear in that video as well. Yeah, who knew that little gland sitting in the front of our neck could have so much control over our bodily functions, but it really does. When it gets messed up, it really can cause a lot of problems and lead to a lot of distress. And getting it back on track, it's a process. And it's a very distressing thing to go through. So whether you're dealing with hyper or hypothyroidism, or maybe you're just experiencing a lot of symptoms right now and you don't know the cause, I know it can be very distressing to feel like uh, your body is you know, kind of out of control and you don't know what's going on or when things are gonna get back on track. It's very, very distressing to go through. So always discuss your symptoms and any skin or nail or hair findings that you have with your doctor. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here, but on the end slate, I'm going to put that video on the skin signs of hypothyroidism. So check that one out for sure. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.